Board Member Dixon Fine? Here. Board Member Malloy? Here. Board Member Storms? Here. Supervisor Nell? Here. Oh, here. Yeah, that's all. Okay. I'd say a motion to approve last month's meeting minutes. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, Supervisor's financial report, April 2016. Shandaken Cemetery burial, $185. Ambulance donation $250. Ambulance fees $3,991.30. Town clerk fees $375.83. Cell tower $917.75. Justice fees $16,414. Building permit fees $3,059. Dog licenses $248.50. March interest $1.62. Scrap recycling, $40.36, and Phoenicia water, $0.42. Cents. For a total of $25,483.78. And, <coughs> Month of May 2016, uh, flood mitigation. A few months ago, the town board accepted the final local flood analysis report for Phoenician and Mount Trevor. There are a number of projects that were highlighted through this effort and several other initiatives the town has undertaken since just prior to and following Hurricane Irene and Tropical Storm Lee in 2011. By accepting the LFA for Phoenician and Mount Trevor, the town is now eligible for funding to start looking at implementing some of the projects. The town flood committee safari has suggested moving some of the cornerstone projects forward. And over the next few months, I anticipate that we will be considering resolutions to apply for the funding to assess feasibility of several of those projects. First up would be relocation of the two buildings located adjacent to the Stony Clove along Main Street, currently housing Ruthgale Realty and Catskill Clothing Out. Of course, this is being investigated with the owner's approval and nothing will occur without the owner's further consent as we move forward. Another facet would be the looking would be looking at reclamation of a floodplain bench along the bank at the confluence with the Asilpis. Again, nothing will proceed without property owner consent at any phase. <clears throat> New York Rising representatives have contacted us to inform us they are moving forward with the investigation of the possible relocation of town complexes, town hall and highway garage, out of our current site in the floodway floodplain to the property previously purchased for the now defunct Phoenicia sewer project along Route 28 outside Phoenicia. It has been proposed that the ambulance department be housed on the site as well. Being this project has been highlighted in the LFA, New York Rising, the town's flood mitigation plan, and the updated draft of the Ulster County All Hazard Mitigation Plan, there are numerous funding sources to help make this a reality. First, the town would have to purchase the parcel outright, which can be accomplished through funding available from CWC. New York Rising will be hiring architect engineering firms to draw plans and cost estimates to move this to pre-construction phase. We have more resolutions tonight to advertise, accept, and award bids for several bridge repair projects funded through FEMA. We will be bonding shortly to cover the cost of these projects while we await repayment from FEMA as each of these projects reach completion or milestones. <laughs> Lastly, the Highway Superintendent, Planning Board Chair, and I will be attending the annual State Floodplain Managers Conference in a few weeks in order to garner more information on how to proceed with initiatives and funding opportunities for implementation. Of course, we'll also be grilling Code Enforcement Officer Tut as he will be taking the rather laborious floodplain manager's exam in order to join us in the ranks as a certified floodplain manager, which allows him to put three letters after his name. <laughs> we wish him the best of luck. <laughs> Phoenicia Water. We have two resolutions tonight concerning the water district. One is to approve the release of the last bit of funding for the emergency water line replacement on Bridge Street last year. The retainage funds were held by the USDA under town's discretion to ensure the work was done satisfactorily. Being the work was done in December, we wanted to ensure everything worked well and that all paving, concrete, and other work held up during the winter. Second, last month, we had advertised for an administrator to assist in processing and, fi and filing the necessary documents to start working on the $415,000 grant we recently received from the district. No bids arrived. In consult with the state, we can then hire any reputable firm or organization to do this work being that Mark Project in Hartville had helped in applying for the grant, and has a history of working with this program, I reached out to them, 
and they are willing to take on the work. The town board voted to hire them at the special meeting last Monday afternoon to address this specific issue. Lastly, we have a resolution tonight to advertise for engineering services for the same grant. There are several projects that comprise the grant, and although we had to present technical data to the state during the application, the construction phase will require more detailed work and project oversight. We will hopefully be accepting bids for this project at a special meeting slated for Monday, May 23rd, following which a committee will be chosen to review the proposals and make a recommendation to the town board for our June 6, 2016 regular board meeting. Events. As we head to warmer weather, the event season comes upon us. Tonight we have a resolution to again approve the public assembly permit for the Phoenicia International Festival of the Voice, which this year will be celebrating the works of Shakespeare and British and Celtic culture. We look forward to hearing the works to be presented and of course the visitors to the event that the town brings to the town. Following the establishment of the Catskill Mountain Scenic Byway, marketing money has been made available for what are deemed signature events in each of the municipalities along the byway. Previously in April, Fleischmann's held Maple Fest as their event. Upcoming on June 3rd through 5th, the town of Middletown will be hosting Cold Water History Days on several sites throughout the town. It is a historical exploration of many of the sites to be experienced in Middletown and the surrounding area. There is Andy's Day in early August, which leads us to our event in August, Shandaka. This will be followed in September by Holiday, finishing up at the Cauliflower Festival in Margaretville at the end of September. Just as we support our events here, I ask if you get the chance to attend as many of the signature events as you can to help support our neighbors, and we would hope for reciprocation. Lastly, we have guests. Um, tonight we have Cassandra and Shana, or Cassandra here, um, from Route 212 Coalition to speak about the PARI program, which is a police-assisted addiction recovery initiative. They are continuing their efforts to help those in need, and as always, are looking for anyone willing to volunteer and assist them in their noble and necessary efforts to get close to home. Following, the ladies, we have some representatives from the Ontario School to present their upcoming school budget for the 2016-17 school year. Budget vote will be Tuesday, May 17th from 2 p.m. until 9 p.m. at your local elementary school. Um, in addition, I didn't have a note on this, but um, as you, if you're not aware by now, Route 42 bridge, the construction has started on that. Uh, they have the traffic lights and everything else. Also, we noticed a sign, a large sign, that said May 12th, the bridge on 28th will be closing. They are still intending to have that reopened by Columbus Day weekend. So they're sticking with that schedule as of right now, but it looks like 7 a.m. on May 12th, that bridge will not be accessible anymore. So with that, I'll ask any other board members if you have any communications or announcements. Joyce? Yeah. Okay, so all our events are always posted on our Facebook page and our uh, website, shandaken.us, but for those of you that don't go online, we have our quarterlies that come out, and this is for April, May, and June, and there are all the stores in town, library, town hall, et cetera. So they're kind of snazzy, and it's a little nicer to look at than just plain flyer. So the next visit by the Upstate Spay and Neuter Band, the mobile band, will be here at the town hall on Saturday, May 21st. They're going to have the babies in distemper um, from shots from 9 to 10 a.m., and then the spay and neuter clinic all day long, and you can call them for low-cost uh, spay and neuter and other surgical things you need for your cats or dogs. And uh, their number again is, uh, everything's listed on our website, but uh, 901-4637. And uh, Saturday, this Saturday, May 7th, the Festival of Voice is going to host a uh, auction for art, ephemera, and vintage Star Wars collectibles at the Parish Hall, May 7th at 12 noon. Um, Head Start over in Margaretville is going to have open <coughs> house on Wednesday, May 4th from 10 to 12. And uh, their number is 586-4002. And Pine Hill Vision 2020. Next meeting is May 24th at Pine Hill. And that is at the Pine Hill Arms. Yes. I'm reading it backwards again. <laughs> this is meeting number five. And this is for all Pine Hill residents or uh, business owners. And lastly, also coming up is uh, Memorial Day Parade is May 30th at 11 a.m. on Main Street, Phoenicia. And last thing is uh, we want to remind everybody that the open burning of Brush Band is still active. This is an annual band for New York State by the New York State DEC from March 16th to May 14th, every year for the last nine years. During this time, the woods are very susceptible to forest fires, and the risk is very high. Rain or no rain. After the ban is lifted on May 15th, you can obtain a free burning permit at the town clerk's office. 
This would be only to burn small piles of brush for yard cleanup. Limbs and branches must be less than six inches in diameter and less than eight feet in length. Here in the Catskill Park, you can never, ever, ever burn garbage. Never. Piles of leaves, plastic, rubber, processed wood, etc. If you have any questions, call my office at 688-5004. Google New York State DEC regulations on burning. If you see someone burning illegally, please call the Ulster County Fire Control number at 338-1440. Now, during this ban and other times, small, celebratory, contained campfires are always allowed. There's a lot of questions about this this week, so today I actually called fire control and got the lowdown. But they must be small fires, the flames should be no more than two feet high, and a water source always has to be nearby. So, yeah, we had that fire last week in Willow Valley, the guy's still in jail, we don't even know he's getting out, but you can't be burning stuff this time of year, it's really not. Yeah, they have to get a court order to get that car removed. It was owned by him, evidently. Ridiculous. Well, very nice. Well, he's got caught. Well, That's it. Um, with that, I'd like to speak about him. Whichever way you like. Okay. Like to address the board or address the public? Okay, I'd rather address the public. Yeah. This is Rick Getty. Yeah. So we have been working, the Route 12 Coalition, Shane and I, Shane is sick tonight, so it's just me, um, with the Woodstock Town Board and the Woodstock Police Department, and we've you know, mentioned before that we're working in the party program. So we officially announced it on Tuesday, last week, and the party program is Police Assisted Addiction Recovery Initiative, so essentially it's where an addict can go into the police station, ask for help in receiving treatment, and they're paired with a police officer and also a volunteer angel, which is what I'm here tonight, um, to help the participant through that process of um, accessing treatment to a 250 treatment facility network throughout the country. And to be part of this network, the treatment facility for every two people with insurance, they take two people without insurance, um, which is really the nice part of that. Um, but there's also um, some funding that may be needed with transportation and also if the participant can obtain insurance in some way, there may be a copay and we need funding to assist in that too. So that's another thing I'll cover. Um, what we are looking for are volunteer angels. So it's out of the Woodstock Police Department. We're looking for volunteers that are within a 20 minute radius. So I know it's not up here, but it's closer down towards Phoenicia, maybe like Mount Tremper, um, because we're gonna call them in on a basis to help pretty much from the beginning of the process when, a, when the participant enters the police department. And they need to be over 18 years old, um, have a valid driver's license and a vehicle, and their essential responsibilities would be just being there as like a moral support, maybe even like small mediation between them and family, um, assisting in tying of loose ends, and um, possibly transportation if you wish, that's not necessary. Um, to become an angel, there is uh, training, there's a three hour training that will be the volunteers and the police officers together. Um, that'll be going over the paperwork, the process, the program as a whole. And then there's also a six hour training that will cover um, the collaborative model, which is the model that this program is based on, um, motivational interviewing skills, disease concept model, things like that, um, will make it really fun, I swear. So um, that's the process to become an angel. There's also an application, which I have some if anyone's interested, and I also have a, job, a volunteer description too. Um, on May 16th at 6.30 at the Town Hall in Woodstock, we'll be having like an introductory session. So basically it'll just like do, give a big overview of the program, the application process, any documentation that we may need for that. Um, and that will be at 6.30 at the Woodstock Town Hall. So we're encouraging anybody <coughs> who would like to volunteer to reach out to us at our email. So that's group212coalition at gmail.com or on our Facebook, you can message us. So we've heard from the public a lot that they want to assist um, in this epidemic. 
um, especially with recent events that have happened, and we're really excited to be able to give the opportunity to the public to not just help the coalition, but more importantly, help addicts themselves directly. So we're really excited about this, and we're planning on um, really getting it, like launching it officially in June. So we're gonna be launching it with a vigil on the green Woodstock, and we're gonna have some speakers, a candlelight ceremony when it gets dark, we'll have some tabling, resources available, a raffle, Paul Green Rock Academy will be there with the kids performing, we have another singer. So that's gonna to be to benefit the party fund, which is being held by Family at Woodstock that will essentially assist financially in getting people to treatment. Um, so that's what I really wanted to focus on, but I have a, one more thing. We do have a Narcan training coming up that we organized. Um, so I have a flyer for that, and that's going to be on Monday, May 23rd at 6.30 at the Woodstock Jewish Congregation. We really hope that everybody RSVPs. It's kind of important for us to get the like right amount of kits that we need. So the RSVP is at rt212rsvp at gmail.com. It's open to anyone over the age of 18 or over the age of 16 with parents. Um, so that's free. And it's at 6.30 on Monday, May 23rd at the Woodstock Jewish Congregation. What did you explain what Narcan is? Oh, so Narcan is, um, it's a opiate overdose reversal. So it's a nasal spray and you'll be trained in how to administer it and you'll also be given a free kit and you give it to someone who you suspect is overdosing. If it's actually something else other than <coughs> overdose, it's not harmful in any way. Um, so if the person is overdosing, it will hopefully reverse the overdose and in most cases, yes. So that's what Narcan is. Um, so that is happening. It'll be by my <coughs> on Samaritan Village. Um, and we also have our support groups, which I just want to remind everybody. So that's going to be this Wednesday. It's every first and third Wednesday of the month at the Woodstock Library upstairs at 6.30. And it's a non-affiliated group open to anyone who's been touched by addiction in any way. So if you're interested, email me or I have some descriptions and applications if anybody wants one. With that, I'd like to employ like the members of the Ontario School Board that are here to present their budget. And, and Laura, you've been here before, as always. Um, you're on the clock. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> This will be someone who, although has oversight um, not on the hardware and the structure and the infrastructure, really focuses on bringing instructional technology into the classrooms and supporting and training our teachers on how to really implement it so that it makes a positive difference and it's not just handing uh, technology to a classroom, but enhancing how the teachers incorporate it into their lesson plans and using it with the kids. And um, in addition to that, we have had a network support specialist. We've actually had a full-time person and a part-time person in our district for a number of years, and they've both been uh, placed there through BOCES. So this um, coming budget brings one of those, the, the one full-time position, into the district to become part of our uh, technology team. Um, 
people who have been following the district for a number of years will be aware that we have had, while we've maintained our modified football team, we have not had JV or varsity. And we have our older students going down and merging with the Kingston, uh, Kingston High School team. We actually have enough kids uh, moving up from modified this coming year that we are going to reinstitute our JV football program. So, uh, yeah, so we'll have some more games um, in Antioch, and the varsity kids will still for now be going down to Kingston, but uh, it's a little more back on our campus. Uh, our district operated um, K through 8 summer program is continuing this year and has been expanded from 15 days to 18 days. And, you know, we were kind of hoping to expand it. Uh, but to go beyond the 18 days, we kind of trail a couple days into that first week of August, and then that would really, uh, we had some concerns about attendance when, you know, people book their vacations, they want to go for a full week. So we couldn't really have it end, you know, the couple, two days on a Monday and Tuesday. It just didn't seem fair to families, and it didn't seem conducive to having good attendance either. <coughs> so in the future, we may be expanding it more, but we're going to see how this goes. And then uh, the last highlight for us is uh, people may recall that we have made some great improvements and gotten the Woodstock playground redone and gotten the Kenesha playground redone. And so this year we wanted to focus on the kids who were in our fourth or sixth Bennett Elementary and get them a new playground. Um, you will notice that, uh, as it says here, there's 550000 in the budget line. And please don't be alarmed, that's not actually the cost of the playground. But we also have drainage issues there underneath the playground, and there are some sinkholes um, down there uh, in that area. So we're trying to uh, repair the drainage issues so that we don't put a playground up and then have it fall into a sinkhole. Uh, slide three shows you that our current year budget uh, of $51,656,975, we're increasing that by about a million and a half to $53,222,778. But as I mentioned on the last slide, um, we've got 550,000 allocated to deal with that situation with the drainage and the playground. So that being a one-time expense, if you pulled out that money, then we would really be at a 2% budget increase. So but just to keep in mind that, that that particular portion of the budget increase is not going to be maintained going forward. Uh, slides four and five are the lovely pie charts that we present every year. And they're kind of just two different ways of looking at the budget. If you look at the um, slide four, it's functional area. So you can see instruction, which is uh, almost 52% of our budget. And if you think about the fact that our, our business is the business of children, and in order to take care of our children and teach our children, we have adults. And that's really our biggest expense. So if you put together in your head the instruction component and the employee benefits component, you really see that that's the majority of, of our budget. And then on the next slide, if you look at it a different way, uh, the program component is over 85% of our budget. And that's really how the state um, categorizes all of our, the state dictates how we categorize all of our budget lines. And all the lines they put into program end up being 85% of our budget. So that's the program to support our kids. And that's really what it should be. The administrative component is 6.7% and capital is eight. And that's really kind of appropriate for for a school budget. And so of course the slide six is what people really want to know is this how is this going to impact us? Uh, and so you can see that our tax levy is actually going up um, by a little under a half a million or 1.16%. And as we all know, the governor um, put in the misquoted or misnamed 2% tax cap, which is actually the tax levy limit. So when we go through the calculation in Antura, our allowable maximum tax levy limit would be 652,000 or 1.61%, which is kind of unfortunate because it looks like I've transposed them, but I have not. So we, we've only opted to increase by 1.16%. So we still have some money sitting out on the table and potentially next year we could use that in our calculations because we're, we didn't need it this year, so we're not using it. But the important thing to realize when you look at um, how much our budget increased versus how much our levy increased and the fact that they're not kind of in lockstep, um, you need to remember that uh, the press covered the gap elimination adjustment 
which is when the state had a gap in their budget, they took money from schools and called it the gap elimination adjustment. My, that was really, really quite clever. Um, and so this year they finally made us whole. So we got a chunk of money back in our state aid for that. And the other thing that uh, really helped us in making our budget this year and not impacting the levy as much was the uh, retirement system rates for school districts contributing for our employees really um, came down a lot, and so we had a big savings there. So when we look at this um, extra money that we're not utilizing this year that might be carried over next year, we might really need it because we're not going to get that extra state aid, and the, the retirement system rates are not likely to give us that great of a savings two years in a row. So on slide seven, um, you may have heard that uh, we are going back to the voters and asking uh, the voters to allow us to create a capital reserve again. And on this slide, I kind of give a little history of where we were and where we are now. In 2011, the voters did approve a capital reserve for $5 million. And in 2014, uh, we went forward and asked the voters if we could spend that money on a $7 million project and, and allow us to use $2 million of fund balance, and we were approved for that. Unfortunately, between then and this spring, as prices increased, we took that project, we went out to bid, and it was all the prices came back well over budget. So we had to uh, reduce the scope, we put it out to bid again, it came back again over budget, and we actually had to reduce the scope again. So it's kind of bare bones right now. Um, the things that are in there that are incredibly important are the heating system at the Phoenicia Elementary School. So we're getting um, that report that boiler replaced with a combination of the woody biomass boiler and the traditional boiler. And we are um, basically gutting and doing the entire heating system at the middle high school, which was in desperate need. Uh, that steam system is going to be converted to um, hot water, and we're going to get new boilers there. So looking down the road and knowing that we didn't get some of the things that we really, really wanted, um, like renovations of the bathrooms, at the high school, which are in desperate need, um, and there was some other work in there, ceilings and doors.